Hey everybody out there in DJ land, this is Ian Golden with DJ Tech Tools, and I've been getting a lot of emails from some very nice people asking me what sound card uh, I think they should use with the Vestax VCI 100. There appears to be a lot of confusion as to if you should use a sound card, and if so, what sound card you need. So I've decided to do this video and give you a little bit of a sound card 101. First, let's clarify. The VCI 100 is just a MIDI controller. No sound of any kind will come out of it. If you look at the back, you will see there are only two connections, one for power and one for USB. The VCI is sending controller information to and from the computer on the USB cable, not audio of any kind. Basically, you can think of the VCI 100 as a very powerful mouse for DJs. So, in order to hear what you're doing inside your favorite DJ software, you need to connect speakers or headphones to the laptop. Most laptops are equipped with a single headphone output. That output is not great quality, but it will get you playing with the VCI 100 right out of the box. The next step is to get an external sound card. With an external sound card, you have multiple outputs. This is crucial to be able to do the most basic technical function in DJing, headphone cueing. While DJing, you obviously need to be hearing one channel in your headphones while the audience hears another. This requires multiple outputs. There are three types of sound cards available that support multiple outputs, PCMIA, USB, and Firewire. PCMIA is a type of card slot that most laptops have. My first DJ sound card four years ago was the Echo Indigo DJ, which was a great workhorse and never failed me. The sound quality is good enough for home use and small bars, but eventually it may need to be replaced if you intend to play big clubs. USB cards are inexpensive and reliable. They usually boast more output options and maybe even a microphone input. There are many good options out there, but one of my favorites and a personal DJ weapon for many years was the M-Audio Quattro, which boasted four loud and outputs and very reliable drivers. Unfortunately, M-Audio does not make the Quattro anymore, instead offering the FastTrack Pro, which is a comparable USB sound card in the $200 price range. Firewire sound cards are the next step up in audio quality. They generally have lower latency and better quality components. One of my favorite Firewire sound cards for a good price was the Presonus Firebox. It's a small, compact box that has low latency, good to high quality outputs, and is completely bus powered. Which means that you don't have to lug around a giant power adapter to every gig, which trust me, does make a difference. If money is not an option, you may want to look at my current sound card, the RME Fireface 400. This German sound card is one of the best you can buy with all the options you could ever want in a portable sound card. The outputs are really loud and clear, which does make a big difference when you're playing in large dance clubs. If you're just starting out, the Echo Indigo DJ is a great option and the outputs are fine, but if you're getting paid to open up for DJ Tiesto, you might want to invest in a box that won't leave your mix sounding thin and weak. Let's review really quickly how these sound cards actually work and a few ways you can use them. First, you need to decide how you want to DJ. The semi-traditional way in which you use an analog DJ mixer to blend tracks, or the completely digital way where all the mixing is done inside the computer. I prefer to mix on a real mixer because I like the hands-on feel, so I run three pairs of RCA cables out the back of the Fireface 400 into whatever mixer is installed in the club. Then I do all my headphone cueing and crossfading using their controls. If you want to mix inside the computer, um, most people run a single pair of cables directly to the mixer or their speakers. Then you can use the headphone output on the front for pre-listening and cueing. If this is the way you like to mix, it may be wise to choose a sound card that has a dedicated headphone volume knob on the front. Then, inside your DJ software, you can choose where you want to send your signals. In Tractor, you have three options for headphone mix, which is where you're listening to your tracks, master mix, which is going to the main speakers, and booth mix, which is normally used to drive the monitors only the DJ listens to. So in conclusion, if you do plan on doing any public DJing or want headphone cueing, you need to buy a sound card. 
I guarantee, however, that you'll be very happy with the improved audio quality of your mixes. Please check back as we will be posting more content about digital DJing and all kinds of technology in the DJ realm on djtechtools.com. Thank you.